Hi guys and gals, hopefully this video finds you guys uh, all doing well today. Uh, it's been days, days of uh, putty and days of sanding, um, but we're finally uh, done and, uh, and up to the first coat of primer on, uh, on the main body and the body pieces, uh, as you can see here. Um, at this point, uh, you know, we're probably gonna be looking down the barrel of uh, sanding and two more coats of filler primer, I would imagine, um, in order to have the, uh, the body itself uh, ready for paint. But uh, we've got all the doors uh, mounted and hinged, um, so everything does pop open and closed. Uh, same goes for the hood. Uh, so I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to this particular aspect and, uh, and getting this portion done. Um, and then we'll move on to the, uh, the interior but uh, follow up uh, here in just a second. Uh, shot some video during the process and uh, so some basic uh, 101 stuff. Hopefully uh, somebody out there finds it helpful and uh, cheers. Hope everybody has a good uh, day of it. Bye. So I thought I'd just share a little bit of the process. Um, you know, I typically end up coming back through with that uh, Bondo spot putty that I showed off in an earlier episode. Um, you know, I've got my printer set dialed in well enough at this point that uh, even at 0.3 layer heights, you know, the finish for the most part on, on vertical surfaces um, is, is pretty smooth. But even with that, on a project this big, when you're dealing with really big planes, this goes for like anything you're doing with a helmet, anything where you need it to be really, really smooth, um, a decent coat of, uh, of Bondo uh, spot putty goes a long way. Um, you know, and you can, well, you can wear, you know, rubber gloves if you want, but for the most part, I just, you know, squeeze it right out of the tube, give it a good coat, you know, let it dry for, you know, I'd say probably at least three or four hours, if not overnight, if possible. Um, and then uh, I come back through with those emery boards. Um, uh, you know, I've talked about these multiple times. These are uh, 100, 180 grit. Um, depending on which side you use and what I'll typically do is I'll go I'll go through and just really lightly hit it with the 180 to uh, to knock it down and the nice part is that as you're doing it if it's nice and dry it goes from being you know if it's the darker red you know it's typically you know, hasn't cured all the way to where it starts to kind of lighten up a little bit and you can kind of see it there in the light hopefully um, and as you're sanding you'll start to see um, it really lighten up to this pink, but you'll see your low spots um, in the darker red. You don't want to just, you know, dig and mash. You also don't want to angle it. You want to try and keep your surface as flat and as possible. Um, in this particular case, I'm down to the 100 grit because what I've done is I've already gone through and I've applied one coat. I've sanded it and I've still had some low spots where sooner or later, you know, the goal is not to put this on just to turn around and take it right back off right so this is not hard and fierce sanding this is a really light light sanding so that you're not taking the product back off the goal is just to knock it down just a little bit to get an even surface and you may not be able to get it in the in the in the first go around so this right here is actually a second coat of uh, of spot putty over the top um, hitting primarily areas that were obviously lower um, and then I come back through, like I said, you know, with this uh, 180 grit, and I just do really light, really soft. Um, I'm not putting any pressure on it. Um, and you're just working it slowly but surely. You know, get up in there, blow off your dust every, every you know, 15, 20 seconds so you don't have any kind of buildup and so it's not in the way. Don't be afraid to blow out your Amory board. And so as you can see there, you know, you can see the lighter bit, but you can also see where I've got lower spots that aren't hitting. But at this point, since I've got two coats, that lets me sand it up just a little bit further and gets me that much closer to having a really nice, nice smooth finish. Now bear in mind, 
this is not going to be your last bit of sanding. You're still going to end up coming through with another coat, probably two coats of filler primer over this. So you don't have to worry about trying to get this 100% perfect, but you're trying to get it fairly close so that the filler primer doesn't have quite as much work to do. And it just gives you that much smoother of a surface um, to work with. So cheers. So at this point, I think we still have a couple spots that are just a little rough. I'm going to go on ahead and spray primer. Um, we've done one coat up here on the roof. All in all, it's pretty thin. I've got a couple of these little cracks in the finish. Um, they're not separation from paint. They're actually cracks in the Bondo. Um, so this is going to get sanded out one more time. Um, but realistically, I think I'm probably going to be looking down the barrel of... Uh, two, maybe three coats of primer on this thing with uh, sand in between. I think the very final coat will end up wet sanding, um, but uh, there's an update on it. We've got uh, all the doors are on um, and fitted. Uh, there's no hinge pins in either of these two just because I ended up uh, pulling everything back apart. Uh, took the air compressor to it. You can hear it buzzing in the background. Trick is to blow it off, wipe it down, get it as clean as possible um, because any grit uh, left behind is just going to turn into texture underneath your primer. It's going to be something that you're going to have to sand out. So make sure that it's clean and wiped down as best as possible. If need be, go through with uh, uh, a wet uh, lint-free towel, um, wipe it down, let it dry, um, and then come back in and get ready to spray your primer. So we'll come back once the uh, first layer of primer is done. Please pardon my, my grubbies guys. This is just uh, it's dirty work. There's just no no way around it. There's lots of sanding, lots of cleanup, but uh, I figured I'd shoot a little bit of video. You know, for those of you who don't rattle cam, um, A, you know, ideally you want your uh, your cans to be you know, somewhere between 65 and 75 degrees. Um, if you live somewhere where it's cold, heat up some water. Just get it to nice and warm. Don't get it to boiling. Let your spray paint can sit in there for a little bit. It lets it loosen back up. Make sure it's uh, shook thoroughly, especially when it comes to uh, filler primer. Uh, you really want to make sure that all the particulate mass is up and in the aerosol. Otherwise, it's all settled down at the bottom of the can and it's not going to spray correctly. And you're going to see me shake frequently. Um, as far as distance, you know, typically I'm uh, four to six inches away and I spray in a sweeping curve. So it's just kind of, you'll see. What you don't want to do is lay this big, thick glob of paint onto your model. You just want to slowly build it up in layers. You don't want to create anything that's potentially going to run. And you're not trying to fill everything on your first go through either, but you want each pass to successfully uh, overlap on the, on the layer that you just did. And this starts bringing out, you know, you start to, after a couple of coats of, uh, of Bondo, you know, like we talked about, you're going to have your high spots, your low spots, given by the, the color darkness. The darker it is, the lower the spot is as you're sanding. Um, and then uh, once you, you know, your eyes start to go a little cross-eyed, and that's why I like to, after a couple coats of Bondo, come through and start dealing with primer, because then it, it puts a nice, even coat on everything. And it helps you identify any problem issues, um, any low spots uh, that may not have been visible uh, beforehand, any rough spots. Like I've got some spots here along the top of the doors. Um, they're definitely going to need another really thin skin coat of Bondo. Let it dry, you know, four, five, six hours. Come back, sand it then. And then we'll lay a, another coat of primer over the top of it. And at that point, we should have it dialed in tight enough to where we can then start going with much finer grits of sandpaper. So we'll drop to, uh, oh, I'd be, I'd say probably uh, 600 grit uh, for this, uh, for this next pass. And then we'll go, we'll do another coat of primer. We'll go to, um, you know, 800 grit. And then uh, 
one more coat of primer, and then when we're done with that, we'll do a wet sand with a thousand grit, and that should get it between that and this primer. That should get it so nice and smooth that we should be able to come back through with a gloss white uh, coat, and it should just look like a million bucks. And bear in mind, between each and every step, uh, you need to be, once everything is dried and cured, before you even remotely start sanding, you need to go through, you need to blow it all off, then you need to do your sand, you need to blow it all off again, um, then you need to wipe it down before, uh, before you get ready to lay your next coat of primer. If you go the wet rag method, you need to sit and wait four, five, six hours. Let it be 100% dry. If you don't have any kind of moisture up underneath it, um, it's just going to go to crap. And congratulations, you were in a rush, and now your paint job is going to take a whole hell of a lot longer than, uh, than had you just been patient and done it right. I think people's, uh, what I noticed the most over the years, and I'm certainly guilty of it too, um, is that you get in a rush. You get in a rush, you try to shortcut things, and the reality of it is, is that you just can't. If you want a really good paint job, it takes time. It takes time, it takes patience, and it takes knowing when to just walk away. I find the, uh, the timer on my phone uh, to be one of the most helpful things because typically I'll lay a coat of primer. Um, I tell it to set a timer for 20 minutes. And uh, when it goes off, I know I'm in good shape and I can move on to the next step. Um, so knowing your times, knowing, you know, there again, that time is relative for me. I keep the shop solid at 73 degrees. Um, your mileage may vary. Your curing times may vary just depending on uh, what your humidity is, what your temperature is in the area that you're painting. Um, temperature and humidity takes plays a really, really big part in how your paints handle. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, there again, you know, this is rad, this is rattle can 101 stuff. Um, this is just for those who are maybe afraid of doing it or haven't done it before. Um, it's not hard, it's not rocket science, but there is a method for the magnets. Um, and this is a perfect opportunity to just kind of start laying a little bit of coat through the windows on the interior. The interior is going to be its own animal um, that we'll deal with at a future time once I get to that point. But it doesn't hurt to uh, just start laying a coat primer down and that way it's kind of sort of ready for when we want to move on to that aspect. You know, the interior is just not going to be as critical as the exterior is for the look of this model. Um, simply due to its nature, you know, you're dealing with um, metal metal barriers inside of it. Um, you're dealing with uh, fabrics, um, and you're going to be mimicking those in paint, and so thus you end up with slightly textured surfaces as opposed to really big planes like this. That they're going to be the first thing that anyone sees when they look at the model, and on um, gloss paint. Gloss paint just shows imperfections like you wouldn't believe. And so you have to be hard on yourself and critical of yourself when you do a paint job like this um, in order to be able to be, able to be honest enough with yourself to know when you've got more work to do um, and when you don't. And bear in mind, too, it's even more critical on a model like this where when you really start looking at reference photos, you realize just how much chrome there is. You know, it's back in the olden days of big metal cars and chrome bumpers. Um, and it's got a lot of chrome. And chrome is, you think a gloss coat is unforgiving? Chrome is more unforgiving. So keep that in mind. And uh, hopefully that information is helpful to somebody out there. I just figured I'd cover it while I was out here working on it. And uh, we'll come back and Cover, uh, cover more as we go, but uh, you know, in the meantime, uh, we're still a ways away from uh, from doing base coat, and it's uh, it's a lot of the mundane of sanding and really looking at things up close. So, cheers, bye.